Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Temperatures already in the 30s, and we're headed towards our first frost of the season. Find out if it's the only night this week we'll have to contend with. The heartbreaking case of a 14-year-old boy from Ash Township who had a catastrophic asthma attack and then a heart attack. What happens to him all comes down to what happens in this courtroom tomorrow morning. Okay, Mara, but we begin with breaking news. Tonight, the UAW has called on union leadership for a meeting this weekend in Detroit. It comes as the strike enters its fifth week now. Priya Mann live in downtown Detroit with details of that meeting and what it means for a potential deal here. Priya? Well, Jason Kim, the UAW sent letters to local presidents across the country telling them to be here in Detroit for a meeting on Thursday morning. Now, while talks at Rensen ended just a few hours ago, that could mean potentially huge developments in just a few days. It could be that we're on the doorstep of the deal. The UAW told local presidents to be in Detroit Thursday, even though there's no tentative agreement in place. That could signal talks have progressed significantly because these are the union reps who will vote on a tentative agreement. Local 4 business editor Rod Maloney says it's a highly unusual move. I find it fascinating because it's, it's not natural to not have a TA and call everybody in just to give them an update. 48,000 GM workers across the country have been on strike for nearly a month. A few days ago, the union said their pay would go up by 25 bucks to $275 a week. Nobody's comfortable. Nobody He's liking this. Nobody's enjoying this. I think that, you know, by, by hearing this, I have to imagine that their heart might skip a beat tonight, that there is the possibility of being on the doorstep of the deal. The biggest issues on the table, wages, the fate of temporary workers, health care costs, and the fate of U.S. plants. They may come to a deal in the next day or two. They'll have the presidents in town, and then they'll be able to do something, uh, maybe have a deal, or if not, uh, you know, send them home. Now, whatever happens, this marks a significant milestone in talks and members may have reason to be cautiously optimistic tonight. Stay with Local 4 for the latest developments on air and click on Detroit.com. Reporting live from downtown Detroit, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Okay, Priya. Well, for the first time this season, we are talking about frost. So how chilly is it going to get, Ben? Well, we're going to be in the 30s everywhere, but some of us may not have to wait for overnight. Look at these current temperatures. It is 33 right now in Ann Arbor, 37 in Flint. Uh, down in our south zone, 37s there in Adrian and Monroe and just barely holding on to the 40s right here in the metro zone. But we are going colder. In fact, the frost advisory technically doesn't start till 2 a.m. and last until 8. But these are the lows we're expecting uh, just about a few degrees away from where we're at right now. 38 in the city, 37 officially. South zone, you should be going down to the low 30s in parts of Lenawee County. Morency may touch 32. Mid 30s is what we're expecting out here in the west zone on the other side of 275 maybe as low as 34 up there in Fenton and Flint and our north zone lows close to the freezing mark. Most of us will stay away, but the good news is this is the coldest night we'll have to deal with all week. We'll look at some warmer temperatures, but also some rain and wind on the way in just a few minutes. Jason. All right, Ben, and even though we could have that frost overnight, the weather might not be cold enough to stop the threat of the triple E virus. Today, the state health department reporting a fifth person has died from the mosquito borne virus with the latest victim from Cass County. Triple E has been confirmed in 10 people here in Michigan now, and health officials are urging everyone to continue taking precautions until a hard frost occurs. We are just hours away before a Washtenaw County judge decides the fate of a 14 year old boy. Bobby Reyes has been brain dead since September 24th. His mother is fighting to keep him on life support. Mara McDonald is live in Ann Arbor tonight. And Mara, what's the hospital asking the court to do here? Kimberly, right now, here's where things stand. Every test that has been done on Bobby Reyes at this hospital has shown that there's no brain activity. There is no blood circulating in the brain. They say he is brain dead. What the hospital is asking this court to do in the morning is to allow it to run one more test, confirming the results of the other tests and then cease life support. Now. There have been picketers and vigils all to support the Reyes family as it copes with what happened to Bobby. Yeah, I love him so much and I can't lose my baby. He's so sweet. Bobby don't deserve this. He deserves a chance to live. 
14-year-old Bobby had a terrible asthma attack on the 21st of September that sent him into cardiac arrest and deprived his brain of oxygen. All the tests run here at U of M show he is brain dead. The family does not accept the diagnosis and so far has won in court preventing the hospital from ending life support. I just hope that they find a facility that he can go to and that they can get what they're looking for and that somebody will be willing to do what the family wants. Family friends back in Ash Township gathered tonight to say a prayer for Bobby's family as they head into court tomorrow. So far, the family has been unable to find another facility that will take him. Back here at the courthouse, the hearing is scheduled for 10 o'clock Tuesday morning. And I think it's important to remember that brain death is different from being in a coma or in a persistent vegetative state. If you are brain dead in the state of Michigan, that means by law, you are legally dead. We're in Ann Arbor. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mom. Breaking news just in out of Texas, where a former police officer is now facing murder charges. Aaron Dean was arrested late tonight. Dean is the Fort Worth officer who shot and killed a black woman in her own home over the weekend. He has since resigned from the force. The officer was there after a neighbor called to report the woman's front door was open and they were concerned about her safety. New tonight, Ferndale City Council votes unanimously to ban a controversial practice known as conversion therapy. The human rights campaign says the therapy is a range of dangerous practices that falsely claims to change a person's sexual orientation or gender identity. Several health organizations consider it harmful. The act will now be a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days in jail and a $500 fine. Police on the lookout tonight for a man wanted in connection with a shooting at an East Point bar this weekend. Police believe this man may somehow be involved with the shooting of six people at the last call bar early Saturday morning. Police say an argument escalated outside the bar and a gunman opened fire. One person remains in critical condition. If you know this man, call East Point Police. A suspected drunk driver had not been arrested yet when an Oakland County deputy knocked on her window. But then this sealed the deal. Whoa, 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 stop, 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 stop. Yeah, this was early Saturday morning near Rochester Road and Avon in Rochester Hills. Deputies responded for a report of a hit and run accident. They pulled over this 54 year old Shelby Township woman. And next thing you know, they had another accident on their hands. This one cracked up the windshield on the patrol car. She was arrested for OWI stop, 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 and leaving stop, stop, the scene of an accident. Stop. We're expected to learn more tomorrow about the possible diesel fuel leak into Warren's Bear Creek drain. Tonight, cleanup efforts are underway after the Macomb County Public Works Department determined that old diesel fuel was leaking into the drain. We're told the potential leak has been under investigation for about eight months. The county and the state have been trying to figure out where the leak has been coming from. The county is expected to release its findings sometime tomorrow. Still ahead, one governor is making big changes in the classroom. What the state of California is doing to give middle and high school students more sleep. A police officer couldn't believe what he was seeing. What happened moments after pulling over a car that landed this mom in jail? Jamie. Forget Gina Davis and Rosie O'Donnell. I met one of the real life players. I was excited because <laughs> there was quite a few girls there you know, trying out for these two teams. As the MLB playoffs continue, let's take a look back at the ladies who made sure the sport didn't die during the war and how one local woman in particular was a part of changing history. You've had their pizza, turbo crust, eight corners and more, but do you know the people and the story behind it all? I sit down with the Jets family, Tasty Tuesday, 6 a.m. There was a very specific moment that led to me starting the Rhonda Walker Foundation. One of the girls came up to me and she said, what do you do when nobody encourages you? I wanted to start the foundation for those kids. If they're in a situation where they're not being told that they can accomplish anything, and then actually showing and giving them a path of how to create goals and teach them how to follow them and achieve them. But it was really that girl that day that had that impact on my life. 